So are you tired of being pushed around by fear? Jeremy Johnson shares how to break its grip and live in a new level of freedom. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, fear has declared war on you. It says you can't do what God has called you to do. It tells you you don't even try. And the reality is that fear wants to keep you imprisoned, but you can break free from it. And today you're going to find out. But first, joining me on the table is April Simons. And you're ready to break free of fear? I am because fear is a liar. That's yes. right. you got to recognize that and just, you know, stand against it. It's going to be a great show. That's right. That's right. Anna Kendall, no yes. fear. No fear here. That's right. No fear here. Amen. <laughs> I've heard that. My husband says he doesn't do fear. I don't either. If something comes up about fear, he says, I don't do fear. Yeah. I'm going to start Kelly saying Bean. it too because fear is just annoying. It is It annoying. is so <laughs> annoying. It just wastes all my time and energy and I refuse to give it my time and energy anymore. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. You know, everyone has struggled with fear. Fear paralyzes you. It sure does. It just stops you in your tracks of whether it's something God's asking you to do yeah. or fear of just what the unknown, mm -hmm. we won't go forward boldly. Yeah. We're going to talk about all that today. Yes. So if you're struggling with that, you do want to stay tuned. Our guest today has the passion for helping believers shatter the shackles of fear on their lives. He's here to talk about his new book. It's called Declare War on Fear. Yes. Please welcome Jeremy Johnson. Amen. Yes. How do you like that music, Jeremy? Was that yeah, good? Yeah, that was fearless music. <laughs> yeah. I think this book is so appropriate for this time in the season. You still see people paralyzed yes. by fear from 2020. So <laughs> declare war on fear. And a lot of this book was born out of some of the fears that you had to face and overcome. Yeah. So let's get into that and talk yeah. about that whole yeah. personal journey. Yeah. I mean, our church is called Fearless. Yeah. And we've seen a quote by Oswald Chambers that said, a scared world needs a fearless church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just resonated in us. Because, so it's a great name, so you got to be a fearless yeah, pastor. Yeah, so here I am, <laughs> pastoring fearless church, still dealing with fear. Yeah. Still, you know, still having nightmares and terrors and anxiety attacks. And, um, and so I had to begin to journey with God myself. I, th I think the greatest thing about to be a leader is that the worst and greatest thing is that you got to go first. Leaders just go mm -hmm. first. Yeah. And so I always tell my church, hey, this message is for me. And when I don't tell them that, usually my wife tells me that <laughs> this message was for you. you right. know? Yeah. And so this book, it took me five years to write. It was, a, I heard the voice of God write a book and I didn't know what about. And this was my journey um, out of fear. And, I, and, and many times, I mean, in the back of the book, I put all God's scriptures on fear not and the fear of the Lord. And I think if my word doesn't touch you, hopefully his word will. How important is it for people to understand that are watching that maybe you didn't even realize that yeah. the Bible is living, breathing, yes. yeah. powerful, yes. yeah. and never changing. And when we know the word of God, that word, have I hit in my heart that I might not yeah. sin against thee? Yeah. The word of God is, is like a two-edged sword and it slices fear in yeah. half. But we have to know what the word yeah, says. Like God has not given us the spirit of fear, totally. right? Yeah. Let's say it together. Right. But of God. power and, and of love and, and a sound, and a sound mind. mind. So when you talk about anxiety and right. all the mental and disorders that are going on right now, a lot of those are attached back to fear, aren't totally, they? Totally, yeah. 100%. And, and uh, you know, faith comes by hearing. Yeah. 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 And then, but it's not just hearing the word, it's walking out the word. Because yeah. uh, Peter and Judas both had the same pastor. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and they had two different destinies and yeah. they both heard the same words. Yeah. And Adam and, and Eve had the same father. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. And, and, and the perfect and it environment. Was two different. Yeah. yeah experiences and Eve had a secondhand revelation yeah mm -hmm. of and and she was taken out by the enemy but I mean Jesus fights the devil mm -hmm. on the mount when he's tempted yeah. with the word of God Amen. exactly that's right you know exactly. and he knew the word did you have to learn that like I mean obviously you're a yeah. pastor you know the word yeah, I know the how word. did you fight through the, it had to the become anxiety real. and fear like how it had did to you become do that? real for me it's literally a journey a daily journey of of getting that word inside so your take heart. us but, through the day 
I had to pause because I was, I was traveling full time and afraid of traveling. Um, I had a fear of planes. I, I had PTSD. I was on a plane that dropped out of the sky and the captain didn't explain it. <laughs> you know, what happened? And I just, I didn't even know it was a clear day. And from that moment on, I would get booked to speak and I would just, anxiety would overcome me. And then just the, the pressures of failing in a city that we were in and the finances and uh, just the fear of leaving my kids and just all those fears. And I think it was just a journey of people that loved me that saw like, hey, you don't have to be our hero right now. Like you need to go get with God and get this, get these things healed in your heart under your armor. Uh, because it wasn't the moment the plane dropped out of the sky. It was not realizing that God kept the plane in the sky. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And that angels were surrounding me yes. and that God was going to take care of me and that he has a plan for my life. And, and, you know, I think in my life, in my journey, I had gotten ahead of God. And I feel like there's a place you can burn out is ahead of God. Yeah. Because when you're in God's presence, you can't burn out. He's a consuming fire. You had to take a pause. You I had, had to, to take pause. some, really slow down a little bit. Away from leading others yeah. that, as much as I could. And that's why rest is so important. Totally. A sabbatical totally. so important. Yeah. I mean, for people in yeah. ministry as a, especially. As a pa yeah, here I am pastoring Fearless Church, and we had to admit to our church, hey, I needed some time off to get yeah. healed. And it was a process. I got worse. I had to go to counseling. I, then God began to show other things that were deep-seated. Yeah, Maybe things from my childhood, lies, you. because fear is a liar. Right. Yeah. It and it gets you to believe a lie as if it's truth. Mm -hmm. Fear is, I think, false evidence appearing real. Yes. And the enemy will give you false evidence about you, about God's love for you, about who he is as a father. What did he say about you as a um, child that embedded? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I had a great childhood. Um, and so I was just like, I don't think they're going to find anything. Yeah. You know, I'm like, <laughs> my parents were amazing. And so I'm in this counseling appointment. He said, usually how you view Father God is, is tweaked from how you view your earthly father. True. And so I said, well, my father's awesome. Like, he texts me emojis every day. Like, he's, pray <laughs> he's praying for me right now while I'm on this show. Right. And he said, well, let's just go there. And so we went and prayed. And, and, and as we're praying, he said, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, I wished my father would have. And when I said that, I was brought back to, like, probably seven years old. I was sitting on my lawn playing catch with my dad with the football. And my dad couldn't throw the ball very good. And it was just this silly moment where he said, hey, son, I could see in the vision that he was embarrassed. But as a kid, I didn't understand that. And he was throwing the ball and he said, I, I don't think I could teach you this. And so, son, if you're going to learn this, you're going to have to learn it on your own. And it was that thing of how my, my father, and so I learned football on my own. I became a starter on the team. I worked hard and all these things. And he said, that's it. He said, you think Father God is like your father. He's called you to ministry, but he's not going to teach you how to do it. Wow. He's, he's going to be proud of you when you do it. Mm. And it was it. We looked back through my life, and it was like, I can knock the door down. I'm going to break through this. And I felt like I was doing it alone for God. And you wow. were doing it alone, even yeah. pastoring yeah. the church. Yeah. yeah. You were like, okay, yeah. is this good? Yeah. Like I did, instead yeah. of allowing him to... And I was living with the perspective, and he said, okay, now let's go back. And he said, were you actually alone? Mm. And I'm like, God was carrying me. He was opening doors. And so I had to rewrite that history in my mind that God doesn't call you into something and then cheer you on on the sidelines. Right. Like he's the leader. He's David fighting Goliath, not me. So how did that look <laughs> different for you, that transition, yeah. when you transitioned in your mind and realized, okay, God is going to teach me these things yeah. and I'm going to follow him versus trying to get out in front. F fear has to die when you realize God is in this with mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Because like God is the majority. Like, okay, like I can't do this. Yeah, you can't. Okay, but God can. Yeah. And like, so just realizing like, okay, if it's, I just got to let go. Just let, let, if this is where, where we're going with this, that's what God wants. And mm -hmm. this is how God's going to get the victory. And it's a reminding myself daily. It's on the plane right here. I had to uh, close my eyes and say, all right, God, show me the angels carrying this plane. You know, I think one thing that the enemy is after, I know he's after our future. So if he can paralyze us in fear, totally. then, then, you know, he's keeping us from our destiny. And I think about Joni today, statistically, kids are so filled with fear and anxiety. Yep. And if we realize, you know, the, the enemy is after our seed. He's Absolutely. after the next yes. generation. Yes. So 
just as parents, I feel a, I yeah. feel a huge just desire and determination to pray so much over my kids, yeah. even though they're grown. Yes. You know, break the power That's of fear. That's when you pray the most. You do. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. also, mm-hmm. just because you fear doesn't mean you're a failure. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. you realize right. it's just a tactic of the enemy. Now I'm going to stand against his fear. So. Yeah. I, totally. I just, yeah, they say kids, teenagers today have the same levels of fear and anxiety as psych patients in the 1950s. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so wow. here we are. It's just getting, you know, because fear never, fear left alone never shrinks. That's it's true. just gross. Yep. So we as a generation have to yeah. attack fear. We have to come at fear. You know, my son's name is Brave. Mm-hmm. And we were driving somewhere one time and he's he was just thinking and, uh, there's this song we were listening to by this Christian rapper called NF, and it says, when I grow up, I want to be a rapper. And we're listening to this song, and, and when we got to the place, he goes, Dad, I know what I want to be when I grow up. So I'm thinking, oh, he wants to be a rapper. You know? <laughs> and I'm thinking very carnal, and he goes, I want to be my name. Wow. Aww. His name's Brave. Mm. And so I think there's a generation that wants to be fearless. Yeah, absolutely. That desires, yep. you know, and, and yes. fear is only trying to stop you. We, yeah. we have this big quote on our wall at Fearless Church that says, never let fear decide your future. Mm. Amen. Yeah. That's so good. And so that's the decisions we make now. We can't make them based on fear. We yeah. have to make them based yeah. on faith. But I also feel like there's a fine line of us growing and strengthening ourselves, stretching ourselves, but when society, or even the church now, is so quick to embrace it as anxiety. Oh, you have yeah. anxiety, let's yeah. pray over that. Yeah. Put you well, meds. yeah, and you're sitting here going, okay, like last week we had a situation with one of my daughters where she was so nervous, and I said, baby, my job as your parent is not to make you comfortable, is to build your confidence. Totally. You have to do this. Like, yeah. and, you're, and she did it, and she was so excited and so yeah. proud. You know, so I feel like there's some practical things that can go in there too totally. if we would just encourage yeah. our kids to be yeah. brave. Over 490 times, God mm-hmm. talks about the fear of the Lord yeah. mm-hmm. um, in the Bible, and do not be afraid is over th- over 365. Yeah. So do not be afraid and fear of the Lord are two different things. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it, it, two different things. Really, you would say, hey, what's the greatest fear of today? I think it's not the greatest fear because everyone has a different fear. Yeah. But it's the fear that we don't have that's causing fear. Mm, right. And it's having that fear of the Lord. And, and, it's that and, reverence yeah. and that honor. And, and, and the that fear respect. there is the word awe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so it's that worship. It's yeah. that awe. So when we have the fear of man or the fear of heights, we're having a greater fear of awe of mm-hmm. man or yes. heights or yes. death than we do of God. And so when we switch our fear, that's why I, I keep telling myself, switch your fear. Love it's not that. if you do, it's what if you don't. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not if, if you run this way, it's like what, what's going to happen when you stand before him? You know, having that reverence and that awe. Yeah, with our kids, it, it's like as we lead, I believe they're going to see that. Yeah. And, and really, we talk about fear like counseling and these things. Well, the problem is, the reason why God commands us not to fear is because fear isn't just a feeling right. or an emotion or a situation. It's a spirit. It, it is. Right. And so you can't counsel out a spirit. Right. I mean, I went to counseling, but you can't, so can't pill out a spirit. You can't yoga out a spirit. Yeah, exactly. You have to cast out <laughs> yeah. a spirit. Yeah. That's right. And so I think we have to begin, like the prayer, it's like not just holding our burdens and complaining to God, it's giving our burdens to casting, God. Casting all of our cares. Casting upon all him. of our cares. You know, as you're talking, I'm reminded of a story of a pastor's wife that had a melanoma on her leg. And it, it, it was pretty deep and it looked pretty serious, like they were not going to be able to get it. And, you know, it's pretty fast. Um, uh, it was it, it looked like she only had really maybe like six months to live unless God performed the miracle. And she, she said she got everybody to pray for her, like all the famous, you know, preachers. Mm-hmm. And, and she was so fearful, you know, because mm-hmm. obviously, I mean, yeah. that's a scary yeah. thing. That word's so yes. scary. And um, she said, but Joni, it was when I got to the place where, you know, I know it's there, but I know that God is greater than it. Mm-hmm. That's good. And so it was that reverential fear of God and awe of God and knowing yes. that if he healed her, great. Mm-hmm. If she went on to be with him, yeah. great. I mean, that is what we're looking for, eternity yeah. with yes. him. That's what Jesus did on the cross, by mm-hmm. the way. He gave us that opportunity to receive him, allow him to forgive us of our sins and that promise of eternal life. But she was healed. 
Mm. And then I remember Dr. Contreras, my dear friend there in Tijuana, Mexico, is like a fourth generation oncologist. He said, Joni, um, people who come in with cancer that are fearful, they're the fastest usually yes. that, I, yeah. that go and mm -hmm. I can't help. Yeah. He said, yeah. but if you give hope, the, yes. the hospital's called Oasis of Hope. If they have hope and you can extract the fear mm -hmm. and they know Jesus mm -hmm. and they know beyond whatever right. happens, right. It's going to be all right. Okay. Many times they recover so yeah. much faster than yeah. anybody else. Wow. Fear will destroy us it's, mentally, yeah. yes, physically, true. and emotionally, yeah. won't it? Totally. Yeah. It, it goes all the way down. It is come to kill still yeah. and destroy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And I, I feel like there might even be someone watching right now that is dealing with that exact mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah, well, speak to him. Yeah, and I just, uh, if you're watching right now, I just felt that in my spirit that you've been given a report You've been given a diagnosis, and that diagnosis is controlling mm -hmm. your thoughts, your sleep, uh, how you how you would normally believe. And I'm just praying right now that there, there was a, me a moment that this came about and that God would instill hope. He's the God of hope. He's the God of joy, that God would restore the hope that has been stolen from you. And Lord, I just pray right now for complete and total healing. Yes. And Lord, they, they would see little breakthroughs and they would celebrate like it's like, oh, it's just a cloud the size of a man's hand. And there would just be a celebration that yes. if God's foot comes through the door, he's coming mm -hmm. all the way through. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for complete healing in Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Can we just all stretch our hand? I don't yes. think we've ever done this before, but there's somebody that this is for and you know it's you and you're like, this is blowing my mind. I'm not changing the channel because these people are speaking directly to me. How do they know this? Well, we don't know but the Lord knows. So let's just stretch our hand and let's yes. just stand on that scripture that he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. Mm. He was bruised for our, our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Yes. And just say that, say, Lord, thank you for your stripes today yes. that you gave your life at Calvary for me, not only to be saved, but to be healed. We thank you for healing right now in yeah. Jesus' name. And you just receive that like you almost like since there's like a warmth going through your body right now mm -hmm. and that's the Lord touching you. So you receive that today Amen. in Jesus' name. Okay, so you're gonna have fear and torment and pain. I mean, in this life, even as believers, but as yeah. believers, we don't have to live with fear. We can walk through anything Yeah when we have Jesus on board yeah, with us. Right. Yeah. What about those people who just, they've kind of looked at the church like, oh my gosh, yeah, I, mean, I want a part of religion or those people are hypocrites or they've been hurt in the church or whatever, but you've tried everything else, but you haven't really surrendered your heart to the Lord. What would you say to them today and encourage them to just pray that simple prayer of salvation? Yeah, I mean, making Jesus Lord of your life. Mm -hmm and, and um, making him Lord of your life. And we know that Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. Uh, that's why you're gonna find people in the church that are still working on being like Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and people say, well, there's a lot of hypocrites in the church. Well, we could use one more because <laughs> God is big enough to love all of us. Yes. And, uh, but you're feeling dead on the inside and um, that deadness comes from the wages of sin, that the missing of the mark, that we've earned it, it's wages, it's in our bank account. But God says the gift of God is eternal life. So you don't have to do anything to earn his life. He paid the price yes. so you can live and walk in that. And so right now where you're at, if you wanna receive that life, you don't have to do anything. You just have to right now just say, Jesus, come into my life, come yes. into my heart. I wanna pray with you. Would you just repeat this after me? If you're watching this and you feel this in your heart, dear Jesus, dear Jesus come into my life. Come into my life. Remove the deadness. Remove the deadness. The, deadness. the sin, sin. The shame. The, shame. the, guilt. the guilt. And be the Lord. Be the, the Lord. Savior of my life. Of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 That that is the most important yes. thing you can do today. And yeah. I want to tell you that all of us have experienced. God's love and forgiveness in our life and none of us sitting here at the table are perfect. Right. And there is no one that was ever perfect except Jesus. And he came here uh, fully God and became a man uh, so that he could pay the price for our sin. And that's what he did and changed all of our lives. And I've interviewed thousands of people over the last 30 years. And it is amazing to me, people that pray that prayer, what happens? 
the transformation that takes place. And you don't get good and come to Jesus. He takes right. you just as you are. You come That's just right. as you are. It doesn't matter yeah. what mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many uh, divorces you've been through. It doesn't matter how many times you failed God. It doesn't matter if you've been in prison. It's, I'm just telling you, you come to him just like you are, and he yes. makes you brand new. You know, I was sitting here, I was thinking about... Uh, years ago when you went through a divorce. Now, you're happily married today. Yes, yes. But years ago, your world fell apart. Oh, my goodness. You kind of lost everything. I did because we were pastors, had a school, TV, everything, and all of that was gone. You know, the Lord taught me back when I had my vocal cords ruptured and I was not able to teach Sing anything in the you were theater. Singer. Cindy's a singer, yeah. so and that would be oh, devastating. It was, it was torment to me. And I think what happened with the divorce and losing all the life that I knew was back when my vocal cords ruptured. And the Lord showed me, like, laying back in a lounge chair, it was like Cindy lay back in my arms and trust me. And then the Lord began to open doors. Yeah. Of ministry. And you really did trust him. I would weep at night and the boys wouldn't know what to do and I would just cry and cry and yet trusting God yeah. that he was going to work it out. He was going to make it. It's almost like you can't remember the remnant of that person because no. of who you are today. I and, know. and God has done so many supernatural oh miracles goodness. in your life. Economically, doors open. Yeah. Just being here, yeah. I might find myself crying. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. a process. Now for you, let's just go back to you. So you yeah. said there was a pause. You really begin to digest yeah. the Word of God in scriptures that talk yeah. about fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that um, I'm really developing a more even intimate relationship yeah. with the Father. Yeah. Totally. Where you're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to sit back and let you lead. Yeah. Yes. Is that when everything started yeah, to change? Yeah, I, I think like you said, right, like he's the God of the hills and yeah. the valleys. Yeah. You know, he had to allow me to go to the bottom so I could find out he was there. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, he, he didn't care if I was a pastor or if I knew every word in the Bible. Yeah. He's a father. Mm -hmm. right. And he met me there. It's yes. like why David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, we don't want to walk through that valley. Right. I will fear no evil for you are with me. And then God prepares this table. Yeah. He's like, you're Ooh. sitting down in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> yes, the enemy and of so, fear. The enemy of fear. And so God had to walk me through that journey. I think the biggest epiphany I had was just like, I was trying to keep going and face my fears and be strong and be tough. And, and someone said, you got to just get tougher skin as a pastor because it's hurtful when people leave or mm -hmm. walk out or wh sure. whatever it is. I mean... And, and I kept hearing, get tougher skin. And then Jesus, in my prayer time, said, ask me what I had. Mm. And I said, God, did you have tougher skin? And he said, I didn't get tougher skin. And he began to show me moments where you can see Jesus saying, you're not going to leave too, are you? Wow. You, yeah. you know, you could see his can humanity. Can you pray not one hour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you, are you going to go to totally. sleep again? And so he's like, I didn't get tougher yeah. skin. And yeah. I said, how did you make it? And he said, I had a tougher source. Mm. So yes. And so I, I began to learn what God says, it's like, we're still going to have problems and trials and situations, but if you are plugged into the source, mm -hmm. which that's where the scripture comes in, 1 John 4, 18, perfect love oh, yes. cast out all fear. all fear. Perfect love is Jesus. Yes. And so the closer I get to him, then the further fear has to get out of my life. And I don't and you have got to his hairdo on <laughs> I got his hairdo. I'm ready for the chosen part four. Right? <laughs> So yeah. Jesus, I look the most like you. Yeah, yeah. See you. So, there you go. Yeah, but you know, I'm also thinking about that scripture, his strength is perfect oh, yes. in our weakness. There's yes. so many times I'll be like, I do not have any strength right now. Exactly. And he's like, well, I do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And it, 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 it's, it's that dependence, that source of understanding that mm -hmm. you are created by someone who loves you so much and wants to have an intimate relationship yes. with you, but he'll let you run ahead. And that's what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah, you, was, you were running ahead in your own I'm a go-getter. I'm yeah. a go-getter. Yeah. I'm going to make it happen. But I was believing that lie that yeah. God wanted me to do it, but I got to do it alone. Yeah. And so God would speak to me, and then I would add 10 things to what he said. Yeah. Yeah. And I was doing things in my own strength. Yeah. yeah. So now here's the prayer. God, I don't want to preach anywhere you don't want me to preach. Right. I don't want to be in any city you want me to yeah. be in. I, I, don't want to, I don't want anyone to come to my church that you don't have for me to come right. to my church. Yeah. And so I can trust everything that comes into my life comes yeah. through the filter of your mm -hmm 
you are guarding the door yeah, of my heart. It's beautiful. And so if it's here, you have it for me. Well, and that that is, a, that, everyone knows around the table, I talk about surrender. That was my book, Surrender mm -hmm. All, the first book yeah. I did. But um, that really is a prayer of surrender, which is kind of like this. Yes, you've received Jesus, but are you willing to go further and say, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. Yes. yes. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll yes. be what you want me to be. In other words, yeah. you're putting him out front and oh. you're letting him supernaturally open the doors. And what peace came with that decision to trust him and allow him to lead you versus you running out in front? In my counseling time, God gave me this word. He said, you're... Only responsibility is your response to my ability. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Your so, only responsibility yeah. is your is your response. Is your response to his ability. To yeah. Yeah, my yes. ability. ability. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Like yeah. as you were pastoring and God was blessing, you, you know, and it's not that you were trying to get the glory, but in a way you were because you yeah. were kind of running in front. Yeah. And I did it. You Here have, I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I have to lead it. I have to lord over. It. If I'm the king, then yeah, I have yeah. to be yeah. the king. Right. And it's too much of a burden oh, to carry. Oh man, people yeah. and life and kids and family and finances and just life. Waking but then, up. Every but then day, when you gave it to him, yeah. and you're yeah. like, you know, your yoke, you know, my yeah. yoke yeah. is easy. You yeah, know? and it's a continual. It's every day. Yeah. It's every day you wake up because this world is full of problems. Yeah. Yeah. And so and and so every day, every day, every day I have to make an altar and say, what did I put on the throne? Mm. Yeah. And I have yes. to remove, that's the war. I'm warring against, this is my battle today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we sing that song, this is how I fight my battles. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is, that's worship. I'm taking, yeah. the battle is over worship. Yes. Yeah. It's always been over worship. And yeah. so God, the awe of God is going to come first. And then everything else will fall in. You know, and that's like you do, you do everything you can in the natural, like with, yeah. with situations of life. Like yeah. you, you do everything mm -hmm. to be loving and peaceable. But at some point when it's still not working out, you just have, you have to trust God yeah, and you have too. to give it to God. And you may not know what tomorrow holds, but you know who holds tomorrow. Yes. Oh, and yes. you know that he can see time past, present and future simultaneously. Yes. And everything is going to be all right. You are going to come through this. Yeah. Well, we are out of time. I want you to remember that fear only has the power that you give it. And if the enemy's trying to use fear against you, it's proof that God has a calling on your life. Do you understand that? So dare to say no to fear yes. and yes to God. And if you're watching today, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to call that toll-free number on the screen. Let us know. Tell someone. Say, you know, I prayed that prayer. I want to send you a free book entitled, uh, Now What? And uh, we have it in English and in Spanish. What do I do after I pray the prayer of salvation? And uh, I do want to thank Jeremy for joining us at the table. Be sure to pick up a copy of his book, Declare War on Fear. It's available now. And for more, you can visit him online at declarewaronfear.com. That's easy, declarewaronfear.com. As always, if today's program has touched your life, let us know. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you and for whoever that was that the Lord supernaturally touched you and healed you today physically, you just begin to thank him for that. Yes. And again, surrender your life to God and say, you know what, God, I am going to turn my life over to you and I'm going to let you get out in front. And I'm going to, I understand today that, that, you know, your strength is made perfect in my weakness and I don't have to carry the load any longer. Thank you for watching. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Jeremy and the church, fearless.church. Fearless yeah. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.